So I'll create a database web tech. So I've created a database web tech. Let me select it. Then I'll create a student table. Student table. I want the students to have a name and an ID. I don't want to be so common. Just two columns. So a name, two columns. So have an ID, integer, then I'll make the ID a primary key. Primary key, I'll make it auto increment. Then I'll create the name as a column, VACA, distance, you know them. Then I'll create maybe level of the student, also VACA. Then I'll save the table. So I've created a table, student table. It has an ID name and a level. Now I'll go to my ID. Then I'll create a new project. For this case, I'll create a new project. Java project. You can see I'm unchecking the, the main class. I don't want to create a main class for me. And I have to change the location of the project. Have a folder for you, so yes, please. then I'll name it Student DB. So that will be the name of my project Student DB. At the moment, everything is empty, so I'll create a package. Package com dot aiti hyphen case dot student. Then, in databases, we have a concept we call um, data access objects or Java beans. Now, what are the Java beans or the data access objects or entity classes? It depends on which technology you are talking about. But for this case, we're doing JDBC. So, the technology we'll be talking about is JDM, data access objects or Java beans. That's what we do. You know, we, within our database table, we have what? ID, name, and what? Level. So you create a class that will mimic exactly the structure of the what? Your table. So I'll create a student table that has what? An ID, a name, and what? A level. And the purpose of this is that if I want to insert into the table, into this table, that student class will take the data and go and insert. If I want to read from the table, I read from the table, give it to the student, and come and give it to me or do whatever I want to do with it. So I'll create a student class that will be doing that for me. And we call those classes data access what? Object. It's accessing the data for us. So usually you see student DAO, whatever DAO. But technically we call them Java Beans. So I'll create a student DAO. So I'll create a Java class. Student DAO or data access object. Then I'll give them those three. And always try to let the name of your columns be the same here. So string. And the data type should also be the same. String. But because the ID is what? Auto increment. I'll not be fetching the what? The ID. I'll just fetch the name and the level. I've made the database cater for the ID. Don't forget your encapsulation concept. So I have these two data members. Then, for a typical normal data access object or a Java B, it must always have a default constructor. Default constructor. It must have getters and setters. This is a typical data access object. It must have a default constructor, getter and setter. Then, 
you will write it to string which you know the benefits so that you can display in case you want to display it so that's all i will do for the student now then for the database what we'll be doing right now in java we have apis or frameworks and these things are nothing by what already written classes and what interfaces the one we'll be using now is what we call jdbc java database connectivity it is not a full meaning it's just an acronym so we just call it jdbc it doesn't have a meaning now the jdbc this is what it does you know you have different dbms's database management systems oracle access mongodb hdb java what a lot of them the jdbc links sit in between your application and underlying what database management system so if i want to talk to my sql which we'll be using in our case that jdbc will come in the model take my data then go insert it there if i want to retrieve i tell it it's going to affect the data and give it to me so that's what we'll be doing so it's acting as a model layer a model board now for any database or for the jdbc we have three main classes that will be using you have the connection class resource set and statement class and there's a fourth one prepared statement but these three are core statement resource set and a connection and in terms of the jdbc or for the database connectivity we have what we call drivers because each um corresponding dbms has its own way of connecting to it those drivers are written to suit how you're able to connect to them so if i want to connect to my sql i need what my sql driver to connect to it if i want to connect to oracle you need what oracle driver if you want to connect to any other database you need that driver so you have to load a driver with a concept you call reflections in java reflections so first and foremost i'll add a driver to my class and the driver I need is my SQL driver. So I just right click on the libraries, add a library. Then I'll come here, NetBeans automatically come with my SQL driver. So I'll just say my SQL JDBC driver, add. That's what I want to add. You can see there's Postgre JDBC driver. And is it there's Oracle? I'm only interested in my SQL, so I'll add this one. So now I've added my library. You can see I have my SQL library. So I can load it and do whatever I want to do. So I'll create a class that will be connecting to the database. I'll create a class that will be connecting to the database. So I'll create another class and I'll call that class Student Connect. Student Connect. Then within this class, as I said in JDBC, we have three main classes. The connection class, that's what you use to connect to what? A database. Then you have the statement class, that's where you send your what? Statement, SQL statement, insert, update, delete, and all those things. Then when your statements are being sent, not all statements return data. Sometimes when you are inserting, you just want to know whether it was successful or not. But when you want to query, you need to get the data. And when the data comes, someone must bring it to you. The person bringing it to you is the resource set. So the result is set to go and find the data according to your query and bring it back to you. Then you will use it according to how you want it. So first, I'll need to create, at this point, I need just to connect. So I'll need a connection class. So I'll create an instance of the connection. So connection, con, I'll be asked to import. I'll put my case here, click on it. Then you see so many options because I've already added my what my SQL JDBC driver. You see com dot what this one is important from what my SQL JDBC dot connection. Don't choose this one. Always choose the what the connection class. Choose the SQL connection. So I'll choose this one. This one import the SQL for me. Then here I'll create a method that returns me what that returns me the connection 
I want to create a method that will do the connection for me. So I'll just create a public. Now, this method, that's what I want you to do. I want you to return me the connection. Now, that's how it works. You want to talk to the database. There's a connection class. The connection connects to you and it returns you the connection. It establishes the link for you before you can send your queries along that link or that socket. So I need a method that return me the, one, the connection. So, and I want this method to return me connection. Get link. I'll call this method get link. Then it will not take any data. It should return what? A connection. So the created a connection instance up here. So I just say return phone. So this method is supposed to what? Get me the connection and connect to the database. Now, with every database or in JDBC, we have what we call connection strings or some parameters. There are so many ways of going about it. You know, you go by the simple way. Before I connected to this database, you saw me typing for the login. I feel the login in numbers. I feel the login. But when you are starting for the first time, you ask for the username or what? Password. It's the same with almost every database. So I will need all those parameters that I will need to what? Connect. Now those parameters, we call them connection strings. They are specific for each corresponding database management system. So Oracle has its own, SQL has its own. All of them have their own what? Connection string. So I'll create string username string password then string driver the driver links us to this driver <coughs> there's a library here in this library we have in this library we have jdbc com dot whatever there's a driver class down here and this driver there's a driver class down here this driver loads the driver for us so you want to give the link to this driver class. I want to give the link to this driver. And this driver is found in this package. So it will be at com dot mysql dot jdbc dot driver. Don't add any other thing. If, even if I leave one space, it will not connect. I want to load that driver at runtime. So com dot mysql dot jdbc what driver. So this will link straight to the what the driver. Then for my case, my username is root. I don't have any password. Then now that you've loaded a driver, you need to get the connection in the driver. And that connection, you need to pass the username and the password. So you have what to call the query string or the connection string. I'll create that string to string dbur you are all to that database <clears throat> and that one is my sql colon jdbc forward slash if it's a url <clears throat> local host colon the port 3306 that's for my sql slash the name of the what the database our database name is what? WebTech. Let me check. Our database name is WebTech. So slide the name of the what? The database. Or you can just create it it's up here. String DB name. WebTech. <clears throat> then here you break it. Plus web DB name. <clears throat> so I've added a database name. I've added a database name. So I've got my parameters. So this dot this, then the local host and stuff. 
Now, after getting these parameters, these are the things I need to add to connect to the database. So let's, there are some methods that will help us to connect to the database. First, but before that, we need to load the class with the power of what we call reflections. So we have a class in Java, we call it class. And it starts with capital C. So class dot for name. Class dot for name. Then this one, I have to pass the driver length to it because I want to load this driver. Then dot new instance. It will create an instance for me. Now, if you not talk about exceptions, we we'll talk about it today. So for now, just surround with try and catch. I will explain what's try and catch. So I'll surround the whole block with try catch. Add a catch clause. So the error is gone. My return statement is missing. So let me move it down there. So there's no error now. So this one loads. It loads the driver for the class. Now after loading the driver, we now have the class in this class like this student connect class so now that we have it we need to get a connection to our database so there's another method driver manager dot get connection now the get connection takes three overloads the first one you can just pass the full length the username and the password and the db url straight away to it or the second one use the url plus the properties info the properties info in Java we have a collection type properties. It's just a key value pair. So you put your values there, then you can load that properties info anytime you are connecting to the database. But we're using the third one. Where the third one we take the first parameter takes the URL, the second one takes what the username, and the last one takes what the password. So the first one is db URL, the second one is username and the password. So this is it. This one, so I have to throw some. Add a catch clause. So you just add a catch clause. Now this method, you can see it returns a connection. It's not coming here. Let me see. The get connection method. The get connection, you can see it returns what? A connection. And you want the connection to give to whoever will query or what? Our database. So I have to cache or receive this connection. That is coming from the get connection. And pass it to what? The connection object. That we created up there. We've already created what? A connection up here. We've already created a connection up here. Up here. So I'll receive the connection. That is coming from the get connection after passing these parameters to it. Then... We have to check whether we are successful, whether our connection was what? successful. So I'll test it. I'll just test if connection. You know, if object uh, reference is null, it means it's not pointing to what any object. So I'll just check if connection is not equal to null. Then I'll just say connected. But I'll use the option pin to show that. So the option pin dot show message connected then I'll give an else part so that you know if you are not connected okay not connected not connected so this how you go by it let me try whether what we've done is correct. So I'll create a test class for it. Test student. Then I'll just say PSBM. Public static word mean I'll create an instance of the what? Student connect class. So I'll just say student connect. So equal to new student connect. Then I'll just say connect dot get link get link 
So they get link. When I run this, I'm expecting some. Okay. Now, no suitable driver found for what? This and this. So it's not seen our driver. So let me see. I think I'll interchange something. Let me just refer small about the driver. Local host contact trail slash home dot mysql driver. So this should work. So let me see my link again. Database web tape. Okay, I missed one part. There should be a column here. So I'll save it again and test it. Okay, now you are what? Connected. So you now know that you are connected to us, our database. So you are now connected. Let me just run you through all over again. Before you start using it, I'm saying you have what you call JDBC. JDBC it uses driver to connect to the underlying DBMS. DBMS. You have three main core classes: the connection statement and the resource set. The connection is used to establish a link to the underlying what DBMS. Then, in order to establish that connection, you need to add a library or the driver. The driver, I mean the Java. And in our case, because you are using NetBeans, it automatically comes with what? MySQL JDBC driver. Because you are connecting to what? MySQL. There's PostgreSQL, there's Oracle, the other DBMS systems. Now, when you are trying to connect, this get link, I'm just creating a method. Because I know if I want to talk to the database, I need a connection to talk on that connection. I've created a method that will tell me what? The connection. Then when you are importing, always make sure you import from what? Dot SQL class. No use the MySQL one. So everything should come from java.sql.connection. That's the java.sql driver manager. SQL session. All those things that come from Java. Package. I created this my username to my database. Password is empty. Then in the name of the database. Then the driver. And the driver is found here. So you come here. Come that my SQL, you come down, you see this the what driver. So you just give a full link to the driver class. So it's just like a fully qualified name to the, what? the driver class. And after that, you give the what JDBC URL. Every data means has a URL, like a web page. So it's just this is the same thing. This is specific for each underlying what DBMS. This is different from what Oracle Stone is different from. Uh, any other type so you must know all those types depend on the database just google it and you get it you are it's a constant each one has its own so if you want to connect to oracle just google it or you get any java book you get it which connection which this connection form. I said for every JDBC, you have three classes. We need a connection. This is just a normal variable. This is a variable. Which connection? This connection. This is a class coming from this package. It's a class coming from this package. 
if when I highlight, you know it's highlighting this. I say we need connection statement and resource set. So this is coming from that package. That's why you added a driver. Any other question? So now we are connected to our database. Now, that's what I usually do. This is my preference. Or oh, that's what I usually do. Now that I'm connected to the database, I'll create another class that will be doing the what? Querying. So I usually call that class manager. So if my table is student, I'll just say student manager. If my table is employee, employee manager. If it's this, because the manager will be what? Inserting into the table, deleting, updating, and doing all those stuff. So I'll create a student manager class. Student manager. Then this manager class, because I'll be doing full manipulation of the data, I'll need all the three words, parameters, the connection, statement, the word, the resources. So I'll create all of them as it goes. So connection. Connection. I don't like long names. Statement. Statement. Then resources. So I have these three variables. But I know that the connection is being held by what? The student connect class. And with the help of this get link method, I can get the what? The connection. In Java, not only in Java, in programming, you have some concepts, you call them design templates. Design templates. They are tried and tested templates or ways of doing things, which has been proven academically and practically which you can use in your code and one of them that will be showing you is what we call singleton pattern it's a pattern singleton pattern and that's how it works sometimes you get a class and in that class that you are creating or the class that you created it's only needed once in the entire application of in your entire application or your program like in our case when i want to insert the connection will be only what once in our application so if you have a class that you think the instance of that class will be only once. Then you make that class what? Singleton. So how do you make a class singleton? To make a class singleton, it's very simple. Under normal circumstance, when you make a constructor public, what are you doing? You are giving access to what? Outside to create instance of what? That class. When I make a constructor default level, when I don't break any access specifier, can I create an instance of that class outside the package? No. If it's the package level, you can't create an instance outside the package. In the same way, when I make the constructor private, can you create an instance of the class? No. When you make a constructor private, you cannot create an instance of that, that class. Because before you create an instance of your class, you need a what? The constructor. Now the constructor has been made public, eh, private, which cannot be outside the, accessed outside the class. So no one can create an instance outside the class. But you can create an instance inside the, one, the class. So I will try and make. I don't want anyone to create an instance of this. I do. I want this class to have only one copy, one connection at a time. So I'll create an instance of this class. Then provide what? A factory method. What is the factory method? They are just methods that you have created them to do something for you. A factory method to what? Return me the what? That instance of that class. So this is how to go about it. So I'll create. I'll create an instance of this class. I'll just say student first. I have to make the constructor private. So I'll make this constructor what? Private. Now when I make it private and I say I'll get an error here because this cannot work. If you are getting student connect has private access in the what? Student connect. So you cannot create an instance of it. So for now, let me comment this. Then once I've made this one private, I'm preventing anyone from what? Creating an instance. But that doesn't mean I cannot create an instance in this class. So that's what I'll do. I'll create another private member. So private, but I'll create, that member will be an instance of the class, student connect.
student connect or connect is equal to new student connect so i've created an instance of what the object instance of this class inside of that class so i have to expose it outside so i've created an instance of this one outside this and since this one will not change it will be best if you make it what finer it's always be pointing to this but that should not be focused the focus now so now that this private i have to provide a means for people to have access to this private data member so i will just create a public method so public public get get connect or anything get connect then in this get connect i want you to return what a student connect so this one return me what a student connect then i'll just say return connect so in this case you have only one copy of what the student connect inside itself then you provided a method that will expose it outside of what the class and that method is called what student what uh, get connect that returns what a student connect so without this instance you cannot have access to what this method And since you cannot create an instance of this class, even this method, when I expose it, because even if it's as an ice public, but if you made this class private, so you cannot create an instance of it. What do I mean by that? When I say, uncomment this, you are still getting what? An error. You cannot get access to what? This private, this public member, because you cannot create an object of the class. Why? Because the constructor is what? Private. Now, in order to go around this, I have to make this method what? Static. So, I'll make this one static. When I make it static, when I make this method static, you know that every static block works on what? Static what? Data. So, this connect here is not static. So, it's complaining that variable connect is non static cannot be referenced from what a static context so i have to change this guy to a static so i'll change this guy to static then i know this one return what this connection or this connect class now when i come here and i want to create an instance it's very simple i'll just do this and i'll just say instead of the new keyword this time to a student connect dot get connect so this method will return what an instance of what the class so it means you can only have one copy of what the class so if i call this 100 times you are not creating new objects you are just reusing what the object which i've already created in the what the class so this pattern that i've just shown you is what we call singleton pattern singleton there's only one copy of what the instance of the class and you provide a what a public method for people to have access to it so now let's go to my manager class then in the connection i'll just say it's equal to student connect dot get connect dot get link because i want to get a link so this one gets me the what the link so this get link returns me the what the connection just note if a class contains a static method which is public to call it you need a what the class name dot the name of that static method the class name dot the name of that static method so this method is what static have you ever asked yourself that anytime you are printing out why don't you say system s before if you go to new system before you say system dot out dot whatever anytime you say system dot out we are calling what a static what method the out in the system is what a static what member of the class which has a print stream as what a method a print line as a method so this one returns as the connection now i'll use the statement first I'll, let me just create one method to insert into the database string i'll create a query variable here let me privatize these guys
and even in this one, I didn't prioritize so it's just showing up. So in the student manager, I have this query. I'll just create one method to add public. When I add, I want to know the status. So boolean add student. Now when I'm adding a student, I'll create a boolean set it to the default value. Then this method will return <coughs> status. So I have this method as student. Now that's how to go by it. We already have the connection from here. So the connection has already been established. So we now need to add, pass the statement to it. So I will try and insert into the database. I'll just say query is equal to. Normally, how do you insert? Insert. Insert into. And the name of the database is what? The name of the table is what? Student table. So insert into student. Then. You pass the values. Insert into student. The columns are what? ID. This and this, but the ID will be taken care of automatically, so I'll just pass it to you. So, name, comma, what level, then values. So, let me just say, coffee class two. So, I've created I've just written some simple query. Insert into student name, the name is Kofi, and the level is what? Class 2. I'll save it, go to the test class. Then this time, I'll not create a connect because I've already have created a connection up there. So I'll create a what? Student manager object to test. So student manager, manager is equal to new student manager. Then manager dot. No watch <laughs> manager dot add student the add student at the moment i've not given it any value i'm just testing whether it's what insert this query for me so i'll save it shift f6 <coughs> connected i have to go and remove the status then both successful let me browse this thing again and see browse it's not successful I didn't. Okay, okay. <clears throat> I'm not done with the query. I've just created a query. I've not called anyone to us. Do the insertion. I've just created a query. Now, this is how it works. This is how it works. I've created a query. We already have the connection. So, you need the, what? the statement to do what? To send the statement through the connection. So, I'll just say statement. So, this, the statement always depends on the what? Connection so con dot create statement. So this one will create what the statement. Then after that, I will actually surround the try catch. So I'll surround the whole block with try catch. When I surround, I will lose this return statement. I have to cut it and bring it out here. So create statement. Then after that, you say statement dot execute query so this one will execute this query insert into so i'll save it after executing it should return me a statement a result but for now hold on for the return statement shift f6 connected it has an error in our sql statement so it telling me oh it's supposed to be execute update not execute Query execute update rather. I'll come to buy 
So now you are not getting any error. I'm hoping I'll get a data in the database. So now I have what? Kofi and what? Class 2. We had quoted what? Insertion. So you know our connection is working. We can insert into the database. So now let's write a proper what? Function to insert. Now that you're able to connect and insert, all the rest is level to SQL queries. We can update, delete, and do all the rest. So let's write a proper, insert a proper student. So I'll go back to the manager. When I'm adding a student, I need what? A student. So I'll create a student DAO. Student DAO. Student. Then I have to get these values and pass these values here. So this coffee should come from what? The student name. Then this level should come from what? The student's what? Level. So I'll just break this into two. Then here, this is what? Normal SQL syntax. But you must move into it by passing those this student object. So this is what I'll do. I'll come here. If I want to pass the value, I have to break out of this. So I'll terminate and break out of it. Then use plus. Then I'll say student dot get name. Then plus. So I just broke out of it, inserted the value there. The same thing down here too. For the class, you have to what? Break out of it. So to break out of it, you close the double quote. Class to append whatever you want to. The student dot what? Get level. <clears throat> then plus, I'll close it. So this time, when I call the add student, it will be expecting what? A student name and a level. So we'll go back to our test here. You can see it's even complaining. So I'll create a student DAO. New student DAO. Then I'll just say student dot set level to kg. Student dot set name to what? To go. Then here I'll pass the student object to the, the manager. So I created a student object, call the manager and pass the student to so that it will go and insert the, the student into the database. So I'll save it. Run the test. I have to remove this. It's successful. We check our database. I click on the browse. Now you have what? Steve OKG. So you can insert as many as you want through the what? The code. For now, if no, if no, you are not building any interface because our interface should be what? A web interface. You know HTML already. So you're creating HTML pages, you get the data, you send it to a servlet somewhere. The servlet will call the database manager, go and insert into the database. Then you keep the communication becoming in that order. So let me do for the update. So let me finish with the other methods. But before, let me just finish with this. So now you've been able to what? Insert into the database. So to update to or let me do getting the data from the database first. If I want to get the data from the database, the deletion will be the same thing. If I want to insert it to the database, let me minimize this. But here, I didn't finish my statement. Here, if it is successful, this one returns an integer. And maybe returned status is equal to this. It returns an integer after here, just set the status to true. True. So that your method will return what? True. If you get to this level, you will know what? Inserted into the database. To retrieve from the database, I'll create another method. 
public to retrieve when I retrieve, you want to retrieve what? A student. I want to retrieve a student. So there are 10 types of what? A student, not the boolean. So student and our student student thou, not just a student. So student thou get get student. Then when you are getting a student, for this case, I want you to get a particular student giving its name. Giving its name. So I'll just pass the name to a string name. But let me create a student object up here. So that I can return that one. Private student dial. student then i return the student if i'm successful so return student the same way i will write a query i'll start with a query is equal to so to set from the database is what select or i want to get select all from all the name student where name is equal to whatever is coming so and whatever is coming is supposed to be a normal string so i have to break out of this i'll break out of it plus name right then plus double quote so select from student where name is equal to this select from student when you just write something select from student where this is equal to this now you have our query so this is our query what is the step first the query you create a statement using the one the statement keyword the statement depends on the what the connection so statement is equal to con dot what create statement you just type this line it should always be there this one create a statement so the state so you link the word the statement to the what the connection after establishing the link you will have to surround the try catch so i'll surround the try catch after establishing the link, after establishing the link, then you do what? You execute what? Update or query. Now here, if you are inserting to the database, you are uh, you are doing what? Updating it. Updating the content of the database. So you use what? Execute what? Update. But if you are manipulating, starting from scratch, like select from. Then you execute query. So I just say s statement dot execute query, and I'll pass the query to it. I'll pass the query to it. Now after executing the query, this is what I have to do. I know I'm expecting a result, a data from the database, and we said who brings the data from the database to us? The result set. The connection said sent the query to it. Then if there's a return type or there's a data we want from the database, it's the responsibility of the what? The result set. And if we already created an instance of the result set up there here, we created RS, an instance of the result set. So I'll just say here RS. So this one, when this one execute the statement, it's supposed to return me what? A result set. So I'll just return the result to what? This result set. If you want to know the return type, just put your case on it. You can see this one returns what? A result set. So whatever is coming must be stored in what? A result set, which is already created up there. So after receiving the result from the result set, then I want to maybe display the result for you to see whether it was what? You are having something for the database. So I just say, no, the result set re returns as a complete table set. Like when I say table, everything in the table, provided the query is correct. So you have to look through and get the data that you want. So I just type while well, RS, it has some both symmetric dot next. Dot next means check if there's a next data in the what? The row. Whilst well, this has a data, then we will say now that if we come inside, I know there's data in the what? The database. So while well, this one has this, then I want to populate what you know how to return this student object i have to return this student object and because from our query select where name is equal to this so this one will always return as what only one what result 
you're not selecting all from the database. So I'll just say students, the students that I just created is equal to before that. Let me give the students um, a parameterized constructor. I'll give it a parameterized constructor. So this constructor select this, select this, generate. So then I come here, student, you got to new student. Then here, we are expecting what? A name and what? A level. But we want to get the data from the what? The database. And that data is being stored in the what? The result set. Always know that the result set represents a row. This row in the database. The result set will return as one, one of this row. So the ID, the name, and the level. So here, I know the result set is holding the data. So I just say IRS dot. And the data that I'm expecting, I know I'm expecting what? A string. So you must know the data type in the database. So the get string. Get string. Now when I press, I enter control space, you can see I have two options for the get string. One that takes a string, and one that takes what? An integer. The first one says what? The column label. So in my column in my database is what? Name, ID, name, and what? Level. So you can use that column label to what? To fetch the data from what? The result set. Or you can use the column index. The index goes according to how it's been arranged. The ID comes first. So the ID will be one. The name will be two. And the level will be what? Three. If you don't know the order, you don't want to confuse yourself. You just use the what? The column name. So in this case, I'll use the column name. So this one is what? Name. Then the same for the level two. IRS dot get string level so i know i've been able to go the data from the database store it in this student object then i return it to whoever will call what this student object i've already created what a to string method for this student so i'll come back to my test this time i'll not insert into the database i've already inserted into the database so i'll call the manager let me move the manager up Then I'll comment this these guys. Then I'll just say manager dot get student. I must pass a name of the student to it because that's what we created for the method. So let's choose a name. One of the names is what? TV or Kofi. Let me pass Kofi. So Kofi to it. Now when I pass Kofi, this method returns me what? A student. So I want to display the student. So I just, I have a student object here. So I just say student is equal to this. Then I want to know what kind of student he returns. So I just says out student. <clears throat> so I run it. It returns as what? The name and the what? The class. So our query is also what? Working. We can send data. And return as what? Well. Delete in the what? The database. If you want to delete, so it's very simple. It's the same thing. You write there just like the what we did for the ad. If I want to delete, usually the similar queries, I'll just copy the method and change the name. So if I want to delete, I'll copy the ad and paste and change the name to what? Remove students. The honey are removing. So remove students. So this ask students. You are not doing anything to the ask students. So I just have to what, change the query. So the query is what? Delete what? What is the query for deletion? Delete from student where? So let me just rebuild the whole thing. 
So delete from student where name. As you are using the name to delete, where name is equal to what? Here, so if you are using the name, there is no need. You can use the student or get name. Fine. But I can just use pass a what? A string to it. So I'll just pass a string. Where name is equal to, it should be a single quote. So I have to break plus. Then I'll pass the name to it. Break and close it. So delete from student. Where name is equal to what? This. Then we pass the query to So this one will delete it from us. So let's go and test our delete statement. So here instead of what? Deletion. Instead of getting, I'll comment this one and delete. So manager. Manager dot remove student. Then I'll pass the name. I want you to remove coffee. Save control shift. It was successful. I could have just tested the status there, but let me just so the coffee is now what? Gone. So I can delete, update, and what? Insert. I've not done the update. The update is the same thing, the same query. What is left with is 